Alright we're in Christy. Okay welcome to the channel, I'm Stanley Ben. Today's video I'm going to be talking about how to prepare for Royal Marines Commando training. Alright, um, down at CTC. Now I'm just going to go over like 14 sort of topics I wrote down here that should help you if you're actually uh, considering joining the Royal Marines. Uh, and I'll just jump straight into them alright. Okay so the first one then is uh, work on your weaknesses. Now when I joined the Corps, obviously I joined the Corps in uh, August 2002 and I passed out in June 2004, 864 troop. All right, now I thought I was pretty fit before I joined the Corps. I, I was very quickly mistaken, yeah. Uh, the hardest thing for me on the Pier MC before you actually go into the Royal Marines training was the three miler. Now the pace was unbelievably quick and it kicked my ass. So. What I would say to you there is working on running specifically like uh, you want to be getting four milers in to be honest because that's the sort of like set run route that Marines do like lads will just go out and crack a four miler yeah it's just a nice one all right so try and keep four miles as like your sort of minimum uh, running distance if you're cracking runs on your own right uh, the second one is upper body fizz right now when I'm talking about upper body it's pull-ups it's like rope climbs, um, just any sort of like body weight exercises where you're actually like pulling, yeah? Like if you're doing, uh, working out in the gym and doing a lot of back exercises, that's gonna help you a lot. So if you're deadlifting, if you're rowing, uh, if you're just doing um, cable rows, dumbbell pulls or whatever, right? This sort of stuff will help you because um, I didn't realize how much uh, upper body was actually needed in the core. Like if you can't get upper ropes in certain aspects in training, they're just gonna back troop you or they might just thin you out. Yeah, so upper body fizz is a must so I would definitely say work on your pull-ups right if you can't do a pull-up work on like underarm pull-ups yeah where you're using your biceps instead of your back and then you can progress to like outer pull-ups where you're doing wide pull-ups with your back all right you want to be aiming for about four to five all right but um, the thing about Royal Marines training is that it's so well orchestrated it's so well structured that um, you get fitter as you go on, all right? And the PTRs are just hoofing it, like chucking you up and uh, teaching you and spurring you on motivation and all that lot. Right? And the lads will all get around you as well, do you know what I mean? If they see you struggling, they're like, come on, get up there, yeah? <laughs> but um, yeah, upper body fears and running, okay? So work on your weaknesses. Um, Sit-ups, press-ups, I mean, they should be pretty basic. You should be doing them anyway, okay? So that's the one, that's the first thing. Okay, so the second thing is learn to do things for yourself, right? If you're a mummy's boy who relies on your mum to do fucking everything, then you're going to struggle in foundation straight away, okay? Because the first two weeks, it's going to be a, a, a kick in the ass, yeah? Because you're just doing admin for like up until like three, four o'clock in the morning. You, you ain't going to really sleep, yeah, for the first two weeks because you're doing washing, you're doing ironing, right? Uh, so you need to start. If you're like doing this stuff for yourself now, if you're like a 16 to 18 year old and you're contemplating joining the Marines, then you need to be like getting out of your bed, yeah, making your bed, like taking your washing down. I know it sounds crap, but yeah, just get used to doing it because you will be doing this in the core. I mean, the Marines is about making men, yeah. This is what we do. We make men. We don't make mummies, boys. We don't make fannies, all right. We make men, yeah. And you'll become a man in your own sort of regard, like to look after yourself, um, not just defend yourself, but actually look after yourself, right? And you keep these sort of uh, skills for the rest of your life, do you know what I mean? So yeah, learn to do things for yourself. Uh, three is practice running in boots, right? Now, I didn't I, I didn't have like high-tech magnums or lowers when I was in training, we had pusses boots, and there's nothing wrong with running in pusses boots, but if you go to uh, a cheap army surplus store, you can pick up a like, high-tech magnets for about 40 quid, or you might even get them on Amazon. Uh, they're nice to run with. They're a nice light boot. So you should get used to running in boots because it is a completely different running experience, yeah? So just try and get those four milers just running in boots. Just take your time, yeah? Uh, like the first couple of runs, just like mould your feet to your boots, but definitely get used to running in boots because you're going to be doing a lot of it in the core, yeah? All right? Uh, number four then is run in the elements, right? Get comfortable being uncomfortable, yeah? Sleep deprivation is going to kick your ass, right? The rain is going to kick your ass, so you need to get used to it. If you're um, if you're into like camping and stuff like that, I highly suggest you get out on a weekend and just, yeah, sleep under the stars, man, even if it's pissing down in rain, yeah? I mean, if you're sleep deprived, you're going to sleep through thunderstorms, trust me, yeah? When you're so tired, you'll sleep through anything. But just get used to like feeling the rain on your face. I love it. I'll go out now and I'll go for a run 
and like the, the rain just cools me down. I love it. Do you know what I mean? If you're out on a yomp and you're red hot and you're tired and you've got the rain in your face, you're like, oh, mate, yes, it's cooling you down, yeah? So I love it. But I'm just saying a lot of people find it uncomfortable. So this, like in, in training, you're going to be very uncomfortable. So you need to sort of get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right? I know it's hard to explain, but yeah, just get used to running in the elements, okay? Rain, sleet, snow, shine, whatever, all right? Number five then is swimming. Uh, now I didn't think we'd done uh, a lot of swimming until I got injured. Oh my god, I got the fractions of my life. I was like a Navy SEAL when I came out. All right, but swimming, yeah, you need to. Work, I'd say work on your breaststroke because it helps with like your chest improvements and your cardio, uh, and it's a great exercise anyway because you're toning and it's cardiovascular, all right? So yeah, if you can work us work, uh, work on your swimming, all right. So just like front crawl, breast strokes. Try and do like 80 lengths or whatever. That's what I used to do when I was joining the core. I used to do 80 lengths with my uncle, who was an ex bootneck, uh, and he used to smash me with a swim. And I was just like, why are we doing 80 lengths? And he's like, just do it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, swimming is a, a must. If you can't swim, if you can't pass the uh, BST, you're going to get biffed. All right, you're going to get back trooped. Um So yeah, practice on your swimming. Underwater hypoxic training, yeah. Holding your breath as long as you can, that's good shit, man. We used to do like 10 lengths underwater, holding your breath, because the deeper you go, the more pressure on your lungs, and then go out for a run, and you won't even feel it, all right? Because your lungs aren't working as hard. So yeah, hypoxic training is great. Number six then is practice yomping with weight, yeah? Get the miles in, six milers, yeah? 10 to 12 minute miles, 40, 40 pounds, whatever, yeah? I mean, get used to running with weight, because... They incorporate it quite quickly in training. I remember that. Uh, I never done any, to be honest, like before I went, and I really struggled with yomping. Um, like after 10 miles, I was I was gash. But yeah, practice yomping with weight. If you can get like, um, when I say yomping, it's just like carrying weight over miles, right? That's all it is, at a fast pace. And it's not like a run. It's like a, a real quick uh, stretching pace, all right? Um I suppose you can Google it. If you Google yomping, yomping it will come up, all right? But yeah, yomping, uh, get used to going up and weight. And going up hills, yeah, over different terrain because your uh, ankles will get used to it as well. So if you're yomping in boots with ankles, your ankles need to get used to like uneven grounds, okay? So this is this is such an important thing because um, like lads get biffed all the time, like sprained ankles and stuff like that, shin splints. So if you've got more practice, the better, all right? Number seven, uh, be aware that you will get shouted at, all right? Now, when you join a core, there's going to be like 80 other lads in training that are from all different backgrounds, all right? If you're like a rich boy who comes from a nice upbringing, yeah, they're going to put you in with a full of northerners that are like proper street kids, yeah? That like their dads used to sell drugs or whatever, like, or their brothers are in prison and, you know what I mean, for killings and stuff. You're going to be surrounded by a, <laughs> a completely different breed of blokes, yeah? Um... And they're, they're, I'm just saying, like different backgrounds, they're used to that sort of thing where you might not be. So you need to be prepared that you're going to get shattered at, right? You're not going to get hit anymore. They can't do that, obviously, but I'm just saying. Uh, and use it as motivation, right, for yourself. Right? Don't get angry. Don't flash back at them, right? Yeah? Because it's all about discipline, right? Just take it on the chin if, you, if you've messed up. But yeah, just take it on the chin so they don't do it again, right? And if they can show that you've... Uh, you're, 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 you're not doing it again, do you know what I mean? And it shows initiative that you're taking things into account, right? So, yeah, be aware that you will be shouted out, right? This is the Marines for fuck's sake, right? So, number eight, uh, practice writing fast, yeah? <laughs> now, if anyone's watching, like, listening or listening or watching this and they're ex bootnecks, they will so appreciate this, yeah? Because, like, the reason why nods are called nods in training, like, recruits are called nods in training, is because they always nod off in lectures, right? And <laughs> if you don't write everything down, there's no going back. So you need to get everything down. Otherwise, you'll be running around all the lads. Oh, did you get that last bit? I was getting my head down. Oh, mate. Yeah, Jen, me too. Right. So you need to practice writing far, right? Um, just take notes as, as much as you can. There. Like, watch videos on YouTube, yeah? And and just, right. So I've put a couple of vids on YouTube of, like, five, uh, five control orders and target indication. Watch those two vids right and write notes down yeah just write notes down as quick as you can and see how much information you can get if you can practice doing that you'll be a step ahead of the game in training right because there is so much information to take on during the lectures yeah that you're going to miss out on loads so i'm just saying practice writing fast if you can right 
Number nine. Now nah, this is nails. Take cold showers. Yeah, this is easier said than done, but trust me, like you will so benefit from this. Well, I had a mate who used to do. He still does it. Takes a cold shower every day. But you're going to be cold, hungry, and tired like for nine to ten months in the in the training, right? If you can, like as we said before, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, they're going to throw you in cold rivers, yeah? If your training goes into the winter months, you're going to hang out massively, okay? So if you can, take cold showers, all right? So it just, if the best way to do it is jump in the shower where it's quite lukewarm and then slowly turn it down, yeah? Slowly turn it down so you're getting cold, so you're getting cold. And it's actually good for your immune system anyway. So if you can practice that, that's great. But I'm just saying, take cold showers is, is hoofing, all right? Number 10 is the um, less distractions, the better, right? Now, when I say less distractions, the better, that means try and go into the core debt-free, yeah? Like, no bills, no drama, no women in your life, no girlfriends, like, giving you stick. I know, like, some people join the core, they've got kids and stuff, but if you can go in training with the right mindset without any distractions, it's going to be a lot easier because you can just completely focus on yourself and training, yeah? And just, like, the goal, yeah, that green beret, yeah, it's just like focus, the less distractions the better, trust me, because I know lads that are in training, they're just like, oh, my missus is driving me insane, like the kids are on me, you know, I've got all these bills, I've got, oh, I can't focus, do you know what I mean, and they're, they're going to bring the troop down because they're suffering, okay, so I'm just saying, if you can go in with less distractions, no bills, no debts, no chicks, no girls, do you know what I mean, you can sort all that later on, but you need to have the right frame of mind, you need to like keep your eye on the target as much as possible, right, that's number 11, uh, 10, number 11 then, um, do as much research as possible, all right? Ask questions, ask ex-veterans, watch YouTube vids, as much information as you can, right? There's a hoofin documentary TV series, um, well, there's actually a few about commando training. There was one with the fat DL that was always scranning. Uh, that was in, like, 2016. So that's actually quite good, because I watched that on shit with a couple of other bootnecks, and we were laughing our tits off. But, uh, yeah, do as much research as you can like, about all the units, commando training, life in the core, all that good stuff, all right? Uh, because that'll keep you keen, yeah? It's like, it'll help you keep focused. You're like, right, oh, right, I've got commando tests coming up, can't wait, you know? Uh, so, yeah, just like do as much research as possible. Uh, number 12, then, is sit down and really consider this occupation, all right? Now, you should have, to be honest, I, put a sh I should have put this at the beginning, um, in the intro or whatever. Like, I mean, Royal Marines, it's all about, like, the potential to potentially go to war, yeah, the reality, the lifestyle, the reasons why, the benefits, do you know what I mean, like, you need to really consider it, it's it's not just a job, I mean, i never done it for the money, I'd, I'd done it so other people didn't have to, but with Afghan was going on during then, do you know what I mean, we were, like, generally at war, but, um, yeah, everyone will have their own reasons as to why they want to join the Corps, but you need to really consider it, I mean, some people only do three years, you know, I mean, would you willing to go through training just to do three years? Whether some lads do like 22 years, you know what I mean? The full shebang. So it's generally up to you, but I'm just saying everyone has their own reasons, but you really need to sit down and consider it. Now, when you get into training, you get like last, the first few days, the colour stripe will come in and it'll be like, have you really considered this before you say you're over to the Queen? Do you know what I mean? Because you've, you've got like an opt out period. So you really need to sit down and consider it because you obviously don't want to waste anyone's time because they're spending money on you, training you as soon as you get there. All right. So obviously they want to make sure and double check. So you don't want to be like a time wasting bloke. All right. Uh, 13 then. Uh, shave your head. Might as well get it done. <laughs> it's aerodynamic. You can run faster. Yeah. Uh, that's what I mean, I've had a skinhead since I was 15 years old, so it didn't bother me, but I was laughing my tits off at all the lads that were getting their locks cut off, but yeah, you might as well shave your head, because that's the first thing you're going to do when you rock up, alright, just shave your head. Uh, and 14 then is like the commando ethos, yeah, um, I'll let you Google this, but it's like um, oh, determination, integrity and all that sort of stuff, yeah, but the most important like part of that, yeah, is something that like, even today, I mean, I work with ex bootnecks like, all year round, do you know what I mean? And the one thing that always stays the same between bootnecks is, like, cheerfulness in the face of adversity, yeah? Now, even if it's shit, you'll still get lads that just laugh their tits off, do you know what I mean? And you're all in it together. Like, it's not shit just because it's shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like, cheerfulness in the face of adversity. So when the chips are down, you know, if you can keep smiling, you keep spirits up, that's what it's all about. That's what bootnecks are all about, all right? And we excel at that sort of stuff, all right? Now, that is it in a nutshell. So, if you 
take into an account it, like, all this sort of stuff. I mean, if it helps you in whatsoever, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, and yeah, I hope it helps. I wish you all the best. Feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, do what you want to do. And I might put a few more videos up. I might do one on um, Royal Marine Commander training experience. That could be something. But anyway, all right, I'm signing off. All right, peace out. Oosh.